What's up, world? It's your world's famous host, Karan Boomerang Gangs. Before we get into our special guest, show some love to the man behind the camera, big homie Chuck. What's good? We got a very special guest in the building today. Very, very special queen. Very talented. Doing major things. Show some love for Zara. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. What's good? <laughs> hey. So we got a few rules on the podcast. Um, one of the rules is no deliberate swearing. You don't look like you swear anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, <laughs> the other rule is um, you don't have to answer anything you don't want to. You just simply say, I pass, and I can't argue with you, debate, and we just move on to the next question. Great? <laughs> that sounds good. All That's right. So before we get into the actual interview, the reason why we started the podcast was to motivate, enlighten, enhance, and uplift the community and our people. And... We felt like a lot of media outlets give Ipsy a bad name, and so we want to show the true light on what Ipsy represent and what's going on in the world today. So, you know, for example, for you, for example, you no longer live in Ipsy, but you still represent Ipsy. You're from Ipsy. So I thought it was important to get you on. So let's get into it. Let's. So you are, where are you from exactly? Well, I'm from Chicago originally. Sweet. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yep. All right. And, uh, but I kind of like say that I lived half there and half here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we were in Chicago. Family moved to Ipsy. Right. Um, my mom worked for Ford, so that's how we ended up moving. Okay. Okay. And they moved, us up, <laughs> they moved us up here. Okay. Dope. Dope. <laughs> but yeah, so Ipsland has been my home. Um, after college and everything, I moved to Detroit. So that's where the Detroit came in. So now I've been in Detroit for a while now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what is it? Tell the people what is it that you do? What's this talent I'm talking about that I ain't spoke about yet? What is it that is <laughs> what Zara? Is talent? What makes a Zara a Zara? <laughs> Well, I consider myself an inspirational um, artist, so okay. I do life music, and I just try to uplift people. Um, I try not to do any cursing like you, kind of <laughs> the same wavelength okay, here. Okay, okay. So, no, cursing, positive. So you sing or rap? I sing. You sing. Um, okay. I've known to uh, do a little something, something with production. Okay. So I do that. You make beats. Um, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? So you're from um, Chicago, yeah. came here to Ypsilanti. Um, what age did you start singing? I can't even remember. I just just started singing one day as, as a little as girl. Could. And you had a and tone. Yeah. <laughs> my, my favorite artists ever were um, Whitney Houston. Okay. That's who I practice mostly. Um, Sade, actually, because my, my people love jazz. So I okay. always had the little smooth jazz going. Um, and Mariah Carey. I always okay. use those three. What about far as more like a newer artist? Uh, 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 anybody... As far as influences? Not necessarily influences. Is there anybody in this generation that you kind of like? I like what she doing. I respect what she doing. I hear her, you know. Okay, I would say definitely as far as around my age too. Yeah, that'd be Kiera Sheard. Okay, I love Kiera Sheard. What, what single does she got? I don't think I've heard anything of her. Oh uh, well, she's gospel, so okay, she that's does. What makes yeah, sense. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. And her mom is Karen, the Karen Clark Sheard from the Clark Sisters. So okay, okay. That's her mom. <laughs> she's here in Detroit, so okay. it's all that's another good thing. And she does a lot of positive stuff and okay. a lot of church events and. That's just motivate up. people. So, gotcha. yeah. So far as what really motivated, okay, you say you don't really know the age you could sing. It's like, as soon as I could talk, I could sing. You know, I had a tune. Yeah. As time went on, was it an incident, a person in particular, a situation um, that really motivated you into singing? Or is it just... Uh, well, I'll say there were probably a couple moments. Okay. Yep, a couple moments. So, like, I guess... The Probably the first thing was just, I just love to sing. I never really thought of it as a career initially. I okay. just like love to sing. Same. So I would just like practice, practice, practice. How does Mariah Carey do this little high? <laughs> you know, and I right, would sit right. there and like work on it. And then like, I mean, I guess like um, as I got older um, and I got into choirs and different things and started getting accolades and, right, and right. Um, I was like, Maybe I could do this as a career, you know. So I think one pivotal moment was um, a talent show that okay. I did, and I got a standing ovation. Hey, I was like, "Oh my god, I did wow!" It. I made 
made it. So maybe I'm pretty good here, you know? Yeah. And right. then, like, I also, um, like, I, I was classically classically trained as far as vocals. Okay. So um, I made it to the top classical choir in Michigan wow. in high school. And I was the only one in my school that made it. So I didn't know that. Yeah. Hey. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's been doing it. Yeah. That was. Michigan, so not I, the city. Yeah. Not, it was that you had to go regional, you know, right. all the way up. And I made it to the top one. And I got a solo, too. Hey. Out of all those people, hey. so I was like, "Oh my god!" So you know, I I just I just really like really I definitely have to give a shout out right here to my high school teacher, Miss Karen Nevins, Lincoln hey. High School, Ypsilanti, Michigan. <laughs> she definitely was like my role model. She helped me like to learn all things music. So I definitely give her a great shout out. That's what's yeah. up. Shout out to that queen. That's what's up. <laughs> it was just like. That's where I guess God shifted me there <laughs> <said> right because <laughs> because yeah, after angel. that like I I wasn't even in, I never even really listened to gospel music or nothing. Okay. I get to college, I meet some people, they invite me to gospel choir, and that's how I got into gospel music initially. Oh. And so I'm in gospel choir at Michigan State. Shout okay. out right. MSU GC. You went to Michigan State? Yes. Oh, you <laughs> so I'm there. Big, you been big time. <laughs> So yeah, you know, so I'm there and that's where I got my start singing gospel, learning all this gospel music. And then that summer I come I gotta, home and get saved. I got to interfere this story. Yeah. How do you get to college and fall in love with church? That's where you right. fall in love with the bottle exactly. and drugs. and Right. And like, I had like roommates wilding, trust me, yeah. like wilding. And I'm up in there like, praying. Please, She's a girl, nun. like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, like, I, and I wasn't even saved yet. You know, I'm just, I'm just off my dad's values, parents' yeah, values. Right, you know? that's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so after college, what have you been doing since college? So, really starting to come out with a career. So I had an R and B album at 19, and then when I got saved, I dropped it, like completely dropped it. Started on a gospel album. Started so my own record it? label. No, never released it. Um, none of the songs Send me are some out, of them hooks. You know? I, some of them hooks. I can use some of that. So, you know, I started my own record label and started like really like from doing gospel, had a home church and she would, when my pastor would travel, she would have me, you know, sing and see. all oh. that. And now it, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. So, superstar, yeah. Superstar, superstar. That's so, what's up. You yeah. got a great story. Great yeah. story. So, so got the label. Yep. You're traveling, you're doing your thing, promoting. What's, what has been the most difficult challenge as being a, a woman first? Then on top of that, you're a black woman. Has any challenges came pertaining to your gender or your... Uh, I would say yes. I would say there have been challenges. Just being a female, especially female producer, songwriter. Right. Like, right. Literally, literally. Okay. And now let me tell you, cause I, I got a lot. I got a lot in common with you that you don't know, because <laughs> like you, how you're doing this. And right. having, I like. I had. I've had three studios. I've gotten like partnerships. Had my own building in Ipsy too. Wow. Did the whole thing. Okay. Have, we called it the Bat Cave. Hey. And so, you know, in the music industry in general, I don't think it's really gender based, but it can be. Is that a lot of people are trying to get over on you? That's right. the other thing. So that's why. And after. After like doing everything on my own, I went back to school for business and started learning business because right, you need right. that. You need that, the music man, business. That's savvy. what they don't get. Music business or music industry. Industry yes. pertaining to yeah. consumer purchasing goods and exchange, you know, that type of thing. So yeah. there's still money involved. People don't Right, they right. Don't, they just think of their passion and the love. I'm the dopest rapper and they make all these great songs and don't benefit off of it besides being famous right but keep that though <laughs> keep that you know because that's that's where it starts just keep the, yeah, the love it, yeah, for music you, build, you know definitely and, definitely you know, but you but you gotta to know have it it's a game or have somebody respect. that knows that's on your team you know right, that right. thing too because like i mean at one point i mean i'll, I'll say that I've been offered some deals and like i got offered a major deal and this deal you know, I took it to a lawyer, thank goodness. Right. And 
you it are. turned out to be like like basically an internship. I give you I give you all my music, all everything. I get nothing, you know, right. just to say I work with you. Like right. nothing, you get nothing, <laughs> and they have the opportunity to revamp this contract as much as they want. I can't say no. Like oh, no. you know, like it's just modern day slavery. Yeah, you, ask me. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta <laughs> just just try to be smart, you know, about it, and and have have good people on your team, you know. Yeah. So so yeah. far as um, we're gonna curb the conversation just a tad bit. As far as producing, yeah, is there any? Favorite songs you produced or any songs that did well or is yeah. or you more so produce just for yourself? I produce for people. I produce for people. I've um done songwriting too. Okay. And that I mean So you get yeah, all that behind I, the scenes. Yeah, funny. behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. I do a lot of that. And yeah. I, I I think like working with people, that's how you learn how to write better. You know, you can learn little tips and tricks and stuff and i have my degree in music production engineering too Sweet. so you know that's hey. that's always been another love of mine so i just so what do you uh, what do you love more what is it that makes you more happy is it the uh, the music or the producing i will say my comfort zone is definitely being in the studio Singing. writing and producing and stuff okay. versus being live on stage it's it's just my comfort zone but i do love to be on stage too it's just you know i i'm just more shy you know well, well you know me <laughs> let the people know uh you know me and you got a great song together uh y'all should check it out on youtube um Boomerang Games featuring Azera, uh, Believe, produced by uh, Techmatic, the architect. And y'all check it out on YouTube when y'all get time. Play it for your kids. It's good for adults to hear, you know, believe in themselves, uplifting, but play it for the kids. Uh, when we created the song, the message was simply to uplift, was specifically for the kids. So we curved it and made sure we didn't have any cuss words in it. And then, you know, we kind of put our effort into doing that. We've been performing the song. Uh, at a few schools and events and um, what would you like to, what do you think, let me rephrase this question for accent, <laughs> what do you think would be the dynamic gust of the change in our culture with music and why I ask that question is once I started taking cuss words out of my music and I do still make songs with it I look at it as I'm responsible I can choose to put out a positive message, or I can choose to put out a negative message. The more it seems like I put out positive messages, the more changes I seem manifest. You being a female artist, um, you do a lot of positive music. What do you think overall, so with our culture specifically, that our people with music should change, upgrade, or take out to push our culture forward? I know it's a very long, drawn-out question. Okay. <laughs> I tried to break it down as best as I can for you. That we should change musically? Or yeah. just in general? Music. No, musically. We're talking music. Our now. culture? Because, I gotta say Good why, question. because again, because music is the most powerful, influential thing that there is in the world. Mm -hmm. um, with our culture, a lot of our role models to the youth are rappers. It's not the president. It's not your state rep. It's a rapper. So if we got the rappers putting out these messages and then we're wondering why this generation is the way it is, look at what we're putting up on them. Mm -hmm. So my question to you again is, what do you think should be taken out of our culture musically or added in or upgraded? I think as far as um, I think we should have a lot more positive music than we do right. in the mainstream. Um, right. And I'm not just gonna, I'm, I can't just say positive because even like love or breakup or whatever could be, mm -hmm. it could be a positive thing. Right. But at right. the same time, yeah. it's, I'm talking more so like with rap or with stuff that's just like, you know, let's club, let's smoke, let's drink, let's, you know, right. or just the main theme of it is just, I'm the hottest ever, you know, right. it's just like, yeah. I think, I think 
um, people, young people can relate to it because it's fun and it's cool, quote unquote, cool. Right. And like a lot, especially when you're in high school, that's all you want to be is cool. cool you right, know? Right, right, right. And so you're going to listen to the, hot, the latest this, the latest that, get the latest shoes, get the latest that, and you're going to try to just be cool. But right. at the same time, maybe the young people don't realize what's really being good. inputted into yeah, them yeah. is even on a spiritual level it's, it's definitely right. not you're talking about like yes, not going yes. in the right direction not going in the right direction right. because then you're going to be you know what's next you know right. you're going to be doing some of those things or you know <laughs> hanging out with people that's so you, you know, think our culture you know. needs to take out a lot of the negative messages pretty much make it i agree, i agree with that i think the big dogs in the industry need to make it more of a, a issue of a conversation. But people can pull up their old music and say, well, look what you did to the people for five albums, mm -hmm. destroying the youth. You know, so it's a yeah. yin and a yang. I think I look at like, and I think you, you got to look at too is what these people want. Right. And that's what they want. Yeah, the rapper of uh, Detroit, of T Grizzly, said, uh, I think in one of his latest songs, he spoke about how the message he put out, it ain't good for the kids, but that's what they want to hear. And this is what pretty much changed his life and got him out the situation he in. So I look at our culture and with music, it's like running in a circle, kind of. In order to get out, you most likely, not all our artists, have to make music degrading your people. So, yeah, it changed your life, mm -hmm. but you're destroying thousands and maybe millions, depending on how big your following is. Mm -hmm. And we always say, well, that artist just came out. They need to mature. <laughs> so we're supposed to wait for this one artist to mature while they destroy another generation. Mm -hmm. And it's hard being an artist. For me, um, you know, I'm responsible in a way. And I make music that pertains to my old life and... It might not always be the most positive message, you know, so I'm responsible also. But I look at my music, I have a balance. Yeah, I tell you one side, but I also show you another side, you know, and I think if artists at least did that. T.I. was good at that. Even a guy like Jeezy, if you don't understand his message, then you, you won't understand it. But he does tell you the flip side to hustling and doing all of this stuff in the streets. Jay-Z was another guy who gave you both sides. A lot of these artists now, they just Molly Percocets. Get high. They're just junkie music. Mm -hmm. It's just destroying your music. It's confused music. You look at the Migos, I love their music. They got the bounce, they got the wave. But it's a new genre of music out there that nobody's talking about. And it's called confused music. You look at a lot of the top songs. Like to say Migos, for example, since I was talking about them. Slippery. They have a song called Slippery. They're talking about a woman's slippery area. But in the midst of the chorus, they're speaking about selling drugs, pistols, da-da-da. And then before the hook ends, Slippery. They go back to the Slippery. What in the hell are they talking about? If you <laughs> listen to the verses, it's like there is no main topic no more. Right. It's just a beat, a bounce, and it's everything that's going to distract the youth. And they're throwing it all in one now. Before, it used to be a formatted song that's throwing you off. Now, they mixing the women, the drugs, the guns, the hustling, all in one conversation. And they're just putting a title on it, whatever they think entices you to listen. And it just goes from there. And I think we got to get back to the balance. Because if you look at our culture, we do come from these neighborhoods that we're rapping about. And nobody, like uh, Nino Brown said in New York City, nobody owns a poppy field, a field here that we know of. So how's the drugs getting here? So it is a game being played. And it's a revolving door of destroy your people to come up and promote who's ever next in line with the excuse of he needs to mature as an artist. So that's one revolving door. Then we have another revolving door with our people of the people that's positive don't really get the light. Only with our culture. If you look at every other culture, the great things people do, they glorify it. We only glorify the pain. We only share somebody getting shot. Um, Back to you, because we came to interview <laughs> you. 
Um, but before we say that, can I just say, I just really want our people, just our talk culture. To them. Talk I just, to them. I just really want our culture to really just embrace that love because, like, that is one thing that can change. It doesn't matter if you have zero dollars. Right. Like, if you walk, if you go to your neighbors and give them some, give them a, a I don't know, some cookies. Anything. I mean, right. it'll make such a difference. You're right. Like, I, such I a difference. I had some cats moving down the street from me about a week ago, and um, they were outside moving stuff, and I simply just walked up, introduced myself, and it's just like, wow, everybody else looking out the door, yeah. and you came to walk up, and, you know, thank you, and yada, 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 and, you know, now my son and his grandson, friends, and, you know, so it does make a huge difference. Just mm-hmm. by opening up love, showing love, it, it you know it connects everything. Love yeah. is the connection, and it affects the, the you. Yes. It really does. That's yes. the one thing you can do. You see a kid, maybe the kid, you don't know what these kids are going through. You know, right, right. just show them just a little love. It can really change someone. Change a lot. Yeah. Far as the future for Zara, what <laughs> what can we see, or what's your plans for the future? Or as of now, you say you have your own label. So I'm assuming you're independent, you're doing your thing, you're traveling. Um, where do you see yourself in the future? Where's your plan? Where, where are you trying to go with it? Well, I I mean, I always, as far as my dream, I've always wanted to be a platinum, a platinum selling recording artist. I mean, that's just, that's just like, you know, just laid out there. Right. But, <laughs> but I, I like, I really wanted it like, just impact lives and with my music and I want to do that as a career. It just like I don't need all the fame. Right. That's, that's, like, you I, said you want the chicken. I just you want I just the money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need everybody taking my picture because I'm actually yeah. really too shy for that anyway. Like I'll be the one like you know, like I think hi, your shyness you know, but... makes you unique though. I think you being shy you know? in this era, you spoke out and you said something about artists need to get rid of I'm the I'm this this and that and by you being shy in this day and age I think the world will cling to that because it'll be organic our last question I want to show some love to our sponsors shout out to Sidetrack Bar and Grill Apes Coney Island Hinton Real Estate um, United Sons Business Solutions Talent by Talent One God Clothing uh yeah you know the sponsor our coin usa we got a very good partnership with uh the crypt new cryptocurrency our coin usa it's gonna be big like real big uh kind of like same thing with the bitcoin type of thing but bigger it's gonna be a lot bigger and um yeah so shout out to our sponsors you're probably gonna go get us some apes after sidetrack i ain't decided yet you know i don't know <laughs> You know, got to keep it local, support the local businesses. Yeah, they support yeah. us and help us keep the lights on and all that good right. stuff. So shout out to the sponsors. Everybody go show them some support. They support us. Um, my last question for Azera. What is it that you... I usually ask people what they think of Trump. Who would you like to see as the president? Oprah. <laughs> yes. You're the first person. That's who I want. I heard it on the she radio. She may not a couple, want to, but she really weeks should. Ago. Yes, Oprah. We need you, Oprah. We, we need, need you, girl. You. Yes. We should do a whole set on why she should be the president. Send it to her one day. It'll get I think to if you go to change.org, I think there's a, a petition out there. They're trying to get like 250,000 signatures to um, get her to. Yes. I think there's a petition, petition a out there. A real billionaire who ain't felt <laughs> filed for bankruptcy ever. You know, a real billionaire. Right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, where can the people find you at on your social medias, uh, websites, and spit it all out for the people so they can. All right. Well, before I do that, let me just thank you and thank you guys for having me here. No problem. I definitely really, really appreciate all of all of what you do and just just thank you you know for the opportunity to thank come share with you coming. guys thank you for coming and sharing your wonderful story i learned a lot it's a lot i, I thought i knew but i didn't know nothing <laughs> oh there's more where that came from right. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> but yeah so you guys 
definitely check me out. I'm, uh, my name is Azara. It's spelled A-Z-A-R-A. -A. You can find me on all social media at Azara Music. Okay. Um, AzaraMusic.com is my website. Hey. Um, I got online. Um, I have an album out on iTunes and all that. It's called Love Notes, but it was from like 10 years ago. It don't so matter. It don't matter. It's a matter. classic underground piece that you'll never find again. I'm going to you know? buy I'm going to go buy so, it. <laughs> I'm going to buy many copies of that. You know? But it's awesome. What they doing it's for awesome. Like, yeah, okay. I think it's like nine ninety nine or seven ninety nine, okay. something like that. I purchased that thing. Yeah, it's really, really sweet. Like, I'm really looking at doing some of the songs over again because right. it was all self produced when I first started doing like music production and all that. So that's dope. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I, argue, I think I'm gonna redo some of those joints. I argue with um someone. We speaking on your sister, Lady Heat, and they were talking about singers, and I said, bro, we got singers. We got people who doing music that the hood don't talk about, but they're doing more than the people that the hood talks about. Yeah. And I brought you guys up. I said, oh, man, great. they've been traveling. They yeah. own their music. Like, they're registered. You're right. You're comparing, like, just because, I had to tell this to the young girl, I said, just because you don't know something don't mean it don't exist. There's a whole lot, all the artists out there, let me tell you, there are so many opportunities out there that have nothing to do with mainstream. Like, right. nothing to do with mainstream. Right. Like, literally, I did a gig and made, hunt. I mean, I made some money. And I, I did a gig doing team building. And it was so weird for an engineering group. Wow. And all I did was go in there. I, I taught them, like, some mm -hmm. quiet, some songs, like, I, I think it was, like, Time After Time and, like, some other, like, oldies that mm -hmm. they wanted to sing. So okay. I taught them, and we acted it out on camera mm -hmm. for, like, two, three hours, had fun, and made a ton of money. Yeah. Like, just did nobody and, know about it. It was, I'm like, saying? some see, small and city. And that's what I was telling a young dude. And I said, just because you see another artist who on the radio or whatever, them people usually in the hole. Yeah. When you usually right. got a big push behind you. got a label, you, a big label behind 30 you. 30 hands. Yeah. As soon as any soon little then. money come oh, in, they, they get that it. first. And you're at the very last end getting your money. And you're right. just famous. Right. Where the 360 deal is. Yeah. 50% yeah. yeah. of all your money. <laughs> right. <laughs> and leave you <laughs> with the <laughs> dust. <laughs> right. So, man. It's I'm, so I'm, true. I'm glad. Completely right. broke. Right. For real. <laughs> they throw you a chain on. Yeah, yeah, they some they gear to look good. They like you did last year, car or something. Yeah, like rental car. Or, yeah. Man, but, I would. Because, like, I know some people that have made it. And, yeah. like, I tell you, seriously, yeah, yeah. when I first was producing this stuff and working yeah. with these big shot Detroit people, yeah, yeah. literally, these guys driving broke. around. Broke. 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 And yeah. they would tell me. They so would tell back me. Before we end, and I would make more it bring working me, a regular job. It bring me back to what we were saying earlier. Yeah. Why do you think our culture brag and boast so much but really ain't got nothing? Why do you think the rapper it, it's always um I pull yeah. up like this. I got the girl like this. I I I I but our culture broke as hell. Is that's the culture of the culture. that's that's what they want that's what they, they want to want, see yeah. they want to see these flashy cars yeah, yeah, yeah. you you can get deals on them doggone things you, you don't right. have to pay nothing, nothing. right to right. sit next to a Lamborghini yeah. right and floss and it's yeah. not yours it's not you know yeah. you could do yeah hey hey but but you know it's real I, I love rap don't think I don't I'm yeah, not hating too. on no me either. I love we, I love I love the, I love music grow. we're trying to grow the community yeah. we're trying to grow the culture you and know? let's stick together you yeah. know. Yeah. But Keep sticking together. Before we get out of here, I appreciate everybody for tuning in to Ipsilane News in the World today. Your favorite host, <laughs> Karan Boomerang Gangs. The Queen of Zara came out. Thank you so much. Show some love Thank to the you. man behind the camera, big homie Chuck. We appreciate you. Thank you all for tuning in. Peace and love. Started off with your bro, 1823. Soon to be Ypsilanti, 1829. Founded by a fur trader, probably wanted to win. I wear minks and I'm always.